This video is how you're gonna get the top grades in your upcoming exams for GCSEs and A-levels. I was speaking to a few of my students and I was asking them, hey, what do you need support with? And they were saying to me, tell me how to study. What? What are you talking about, man? With exams about 116, 115 days from the time I'm shooting this video, that's not a lot of time left and I can see why you guys are anxious. What on earth should you really be doing right now? And a lot of these guys, I'm sure like yourself, have asked your school teachers or your friends and how to revise, how, what are you meant to be doing today? What are you meant to be doing tomorrow? Well, this is like the surefire plan and the exact step-by-step -step method that you're gonna use to get the top grades possible. This video is for you if you're a grade two student, grade three student, grade seven or eight student. Doesn't really matter. This video is the perfect solution that you are looking for. This is gonna be a long video. I don't really care about the algorithm where you generally meant to make shorter videos. I'm gonna make this super detailed. So, you know, for those of you that are really interested about the education, you can watch this from start to finish. This is kind of the main advice that I'm gonna lay all out for you all for free in this video. So it's gonna be a long one, you know, get your popcorn, sit back. Let's get a few things out the way. And I've talked about this in multiple other videos. The most important thing, if you don't know this by now, son, you better wake up and smell the coffee. The most important way to improve your grades is by doing pass papers. And these pass papers are based on active recall and space repetition. Two of the most important principles in the scientific literature. And that's what we want to focus on. We have limited time, so this video would be applicable to you if you have anywhere between 115 days, 116 days and less till your exams in May or June. So what you want to do, we want to work on things that are going to move the needle the most, the exam papers. I hear you saying from the other side of the screen, hey, but what about my content? My school hasn't done content. And here's, here's my honest opinion on that. Yes, it would have been amazing for you to have done the content. But if you haven't done the content by now, you're kind of in the last chance saloon. I would say maybe you have two more weeks. So if you have more than 100 days left when you're watching this video till your first exam, maybe you've got two, three weeks left till you can still do the content. But after that, you are not allowed to do the content. It is haram for you to do the content, my friend. And here's the reason why. We already established that the papers are the most effective way of improving your grades. That means we have to sacrifice things that are less effective, like your content. Now, how do you answer questions when you don't know anything about them? Well, in general, the papers will tell you what are the most important types of questions that you're gonna get tested on. So not everything in the specification is equally relevant. For example, I'll give you an example from majority of the physics GCSE specifications, AQA, Edexcel, you know, you name it. And they ask you to learn something very peculiar. They ask you to learn walking speeds. They ask you to learn transportation speeds, so the speed of a train, an estimation for the speed of a train, an estimation for the speed of an aeroplane. These types of things very rarely come up. So what I'm saying is beyond January of this year, when you have say 100 days or less left, do not waste your time on the content. Let's go through the papers. Start from the first paper. And it doesn't matter if you get 10%, you get 0%, it does not matter. Let's now go into the plan. Get your notepad out, get your pen out, and write this down carefully. Because I need you to do this exact plan if you need to go from a three to a seven or a four to an eight or a five to a nine, whatever it is, you need to follow this plan to the T. Step one, we need to do papers, as we've said. And I sound like a broken record here, but that is what we need to do. So every day, you are gonna do two papers a day after school. So after school, you need to find time to get two papers in. That probably means about four hours of work. And on a non-school day, I need you to do four papers per day. That probably means about eight hours of work. Now, this is the kind of maximum feasible time that students can find in their day. And this is based on kind of having spoken to students who've gone grade eights, grade nines in the past with us. So this is what the top students do. So if you want to get there, you still have the time, please do this. Step one, papers, two per day on a school day, four on a non-school day. Cool, everybody clear? Right, step two, you need to mark the papers. As shocking as they may sound to you, the science, the maths, and any kind of sciency or fact-based subjects, you need to mark yourself. Now, if it's an essay-based subject, then you need to get an examiner or a teacher to mark it. 
So what we do with our students, for example, is we have an external examiner who would mark these essay based subjects and then they give them feedback for this because you can't self mark an essay in English, which is subjective. Like I might think is amazing. Another person might think is terrible. So you need an expert opinion when it comes to maths and science. You know, this is very fact based. Yeah. So you can see exactly what the mark scheme is saying. So just because you know that the sun is hot, for example, doesn't mean you're going to get the full marks in the test unless you mention, for example, that the sun emits infrared radiation. If you don't mention the specific terminology, you don't get the mark. So that is why it's important that you learn to mark your own paper. Now, number three, we've done the paper, we've done, marked it. Now we need to record it. I'm going to show you a template here that we use with hundreds of thousands of students. And this is probably the thing that <laughs> the reason that so many parents and students actually end up signing up with us when they see this, they're like, wow, this is amazing. The truth is it is amazing. Having your record of your test papers written down in a systematic way, allows us to not fool ourselves. I know a lot of you, what you guys do, you're like, oh, I'm good at biology. I'm terrible at physics. And you rely on your feelings. Nobody cares about your feelings. Okay, some people do, but for your exams, we need to care about the data. We need to care about the evidence, right? So if you guys are serious, we don't want to rely on your feelings because feelings can, you know, deceive us. So we want to rely on evidence. And what you see here, for example, for this student is you know, you, you start off with, on a certain mark. So each row represents a paper. And then as you do more papers, hopefully your marks are improving. You may ask me, how many papers am I meant to do? Well, one of the reasons I want you to stop the content by the end of January, you know, before you got less than hundred days left is because I want you to do 70 papers per subject. Now for a level, I may say it, and it depends on your weaknesses. I may say that's 80 or 90. And if you've kind of done your AS exams and you did poorly in those, you probably need to do 80 or 90 of those too. So there's a lot of papers per subject that you need to do, especially your core subjects in GCSE. Some of your other subjects, you may not need to do as many papers. Okay, so we've done the paper, we've marked it, we've recorded it. Number four, you now need to learn and understand your mistakes. There is no point doing a paper after paper, after paper, after paper, because that's not going to improve your grades. All right. Or it will only improve your grades marginally. We need to be super effective. And remember, this is a in detail plan for those of you that need to know exactly what to do. You need to understand it. How do you do that? Number one, you try to understand it directly from the mark scheme. The mark scheme is the most effective way for you to understand, you know, where you went wrong. But I understand. And you know, if you've looked at a mark scheme that sometimes it'll just say something like seven grams. I mean, how did you get to that mark scheme? How, you know, it doesn't make sense to you, right? So sometimes the mark scheme's not going to make sense to you. But in other cases, if it's like a definition or something, you know, they've shown you the steps, then great. You use that and you understand it from there. What happens if you can't learn it from the mark scheme? We go to the next stage for B. All right. And that stage is looking at your notes. So if you've already done the content and you've made notes, then that is what you should be referring to your own set of notes, your one source of truth. And we've looked at our notes and, you know, hopefully the notes are sufficient and they help you understand the problem. In most cases, the notes are not sufficient. I remember even my notes and I used to think my notes were pretty good. They wouldn't be hundred percent solid. I would always end up adding one or two or three things to the notes and that's fine. It's okay to update your notes, but the key thing is you always refer back to the notes every time you're stuck. Now, let's say your notes <laughs> are not that useful to you. Either you didn't do the content, so you don't have any notes or you did it, but it wasn't really that great. In this case, we need to go to 4C. Now, what we're going to do here is look at other resources. So this could be, I don't know, Matt's Genie. This could be Cognito. It could be whatever, right? Like whatever you're using online, whatever textbook you've got, you may look at other resources. Now with these resources, I don't want you to spend more than five to 10 minutes. So there is a limit when it comes to learning your mistakes, five to 10 minutes using other resources. And you might say, why? Hmm. Why is that? Don't you want me to learn my mistakes? I thought that was the whole point of this section, you know, understand it, learn it. Yeah, that's true. But you've also got to remember you've got limited time. So 
we're gonna go to the next stage 4d and that this is the final stage in understanding so if you can't understand it from other resources you ask someone so you ask a friend you ask a tutor you ask you know on any forums or groups and things like that someone who's going to save you time and that's really the benefit of having a coach a tutor a teacher they have the ability to save you time so i don't want you to spend five hours trying to work out a definition or an understanding or whatever right just go and ask someone once you've had an initial attempt check if you guys are paying attention at this point after having done these four sub steps of understanding you have now understood 100 percent because there's no way you're not going to get an answer from someone who's an expert in this when you've asked them right or you know from one of the earlier stages okay cool number five now we've understood it we've got to remember a principle which is called the forgetting curve the forgetting curve is really telling us that we forget 80 percent of the stuff roughly by the next day so what i'm telling you today if you haven't noted this down you probably forget it by tomorrow so wake up make some notes guys and this is exactly what you're going to do with your paper you're going to make a cheat sheet now if you don't know what a cheat sheet is guys it is effectively a piece of paper which if you had in the exam you would score 100 percent on that particular paper now what you're going to do is the understanding that you got from part four you're going to translate that and put it onto a piece of paper so i don't want you to write the answer is seven grams i want you to write how to get to it and that is what you're going to capture on this cheat sheet so after every paper once you've understood it you're going to put it on a cheat sheet and now if you're following the logic you see you've gone from 100 percent understanding to 100 percent understanding on a piece of paper number six if you remember you're not allowed to cheat in an exam so the cheat sheet needs a solution itself and what we need to do is commit this to memory all right and there's two solutions to this 6a is rote learning now i've done a whole video on rote learning please go watch it it explains every single step of how to memorize in the best possible manner i would use rote learning some of you guys might know it as blurting by the way right blurting is a variation of it the way that i'm going to explain it in that video it will break down exactly how you're going to memorize so for example you want to memorize in small chunks for example you don't want to move on until you've got a certain level of confidence in your memorization so there's certain things that blurting by itself doesn't take into account so please go and watch this video anything that doesn't work from rote learning so I would say rote learning would work for 80, 90% of the content that you need. What we're going to do is we're going to go to 6B, which is flashcards. So for about 10 to 20%, we're going to use flashcards for memorization. So flashcards are really simple. You don't need to watch a video on it. You put a question on one side and answer on the other side. But you got to keep the answers to maximum three items. All right, because our memory, our short term memory can only remember three to five items in one go. And if you're following the logic now, this understanding that was on a piece of paper has now gone into your brain. Okie dokes. And the idea is this. If I made you do that same paper again, let's say it's 2003, uh, June, AQA, Physics 1, for example. If I made you do that same paper again, after you've gone through these steps, you should be able to get 100%. If you can't, then you haven't done these steps properly. You haven't asked, you know, the, you know, the experts on it. You haven't kind of done a cheat sheet. You haven't memorized it and so on and so forth. So I don't want you to do the next paper until you've done all of these six steps. And step seven, the most important step after the first six important steps is to do the next paper. So repeat steps one to six for the next paper it was really vital that you follow each of these steps and and this is what you call revision because you know i say to students like what are you doing they're like revising but then they don't really know what to do there some schools are telling them make a revision plan some schools are telling them make a timetable some schools are saying do this do pomodoro do this you know who cares bro focus on what's going to get you the right results and the example i get i gave this analogy a few days ago on one of the client calls to uh, my students i said you know, doing lots of papers, as an example, is kind of having like a lot of clothes that you're just chucking in a pile. So you're just getting a piece of, you know, your T-shirt, your jeans, you're just chucking them one on top of each other. But if you follow these six, seven steps that I just 
identified this seven step method that I wrote down for you, then what you're doing is you're ironing out each of these pieces of clothes, all right? You're ironing out all the kinks and that is what we need to do. So iron out all of your mistakes because I don't really care if you get 0% on the next test. Yeah, really, I'm not joking. As long as those mistakes are new mistakes. As Einstein said, doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity.